Hello and welcome back to my craft room. It's quite late in the evening. I don't feel like going to sleep yet, so I'm going to have another little catch up with my online art classes. I am way, way behind. Um, this week on Let's Face It 2021, we had a lesson with Jenny Mano. I love Jenny Mano's work. Um, it's really, it's really vibrant. She loves pan pastels um, and I've just recently discovered them and really love them as well but need to practice using them so this is my little stack of pan pastels um, which luckily I managed to get on eBay for kind of half the price they should have been it's quite a considered um, purchase but wow I'm enjoying them so much um, and I love what Jenny does with them, so it's really nice to have another lesson with her. Um, in preparation, I have got a little, I've just used a little, um, cartridge pad. Probably came, yes, came in my scrawler box. <laughs> Mostly is it a lay five pads that I've got came in my scrawler box, because that's the size of the scrawler box. I've done a little sketch. That's it. I've done a little sketch ready. I'm going to use some of this Frisk um, transfer paper. It's quite good, this stuff, because it's, it's quite expensive. You get a sheet like this, but it's not just like carbon paper, because carbon paper is kind of waxy and you can't rub it off, so it, it kind of stays there. Whereas with this, it's it's like graphite, so you can just rub it off with a with a normal eraser. And I found that I can use the sheets over and over again. You don't just use the sheet once and throw it away. You can use it over and over again. So, which I definitely will do because it was quite expensive for these few sheets in here. So I've got that ready now. The other pan pastels are expensive, and the um, paper that's made for using with pastels is also a bit expensive. So from what Jenny is saying, the best kind of thing, I just have one tiny A5 sheet of, again, probably came in a scrawler box. It's this sanded, kind of sanded paper. It has a real kind of the feel of a very, very fine sandpaper to it. Um, but Jenny does say that she also has used um, watercolour paper and prepped it with like a gesso or something. So what I've done is I've used, and she likes to use a dark colour and then leave a little bit of that dark colour at the outlines to just give a sense of um, shading and definition. So what I've done is I've taken two pens. I've got this one. Um, so it's quite a heavy weight, 250 um, gram that one and this one yeah also 250 uh, GSM this one is like a darkish oh, it doesn't really show there it'll look better when I show you on the desk cam in a minute so this one's a darkish grey and this one is a black and what I've done is I've given them both a coat of transparent gesso still getting used to this camera um, which it's been quite successful on here you can't really even see a texture to it so before the gesso it looked like this after the gesso it looked like this it's got the same slight you know still smooth but it's got a tooth to it which feels to me not that dissimilar to the very expensive um, pastel matte paper so I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it and just hope that it works. On the black, though, as you can see, so this is the paper without. This is with. It hasn't dried completely clear. And I've noticed this happen a couple of times recently, so I'm not quite sure why that's happening. I don't think it's going to matter in the finished piece. I don't think it's going to matter at all. So I'm quite interested to try both of them, actually, and see how, how I get on. So, um... I'm going to, I think the first one I'm going to try is this one. So this is the, um, this, um, with the layer of transparent gesso on it. And I'm going to use the, the graphite transfer paper 
to transfer my sketch. If I was going to transfer my sketch to this one, um, I think there is a, I think Jenny uses a white transfer paper, which I don't have and I'm not going to go buying it especially. So what she suggests you can try is putting some chalk on the back of the piece of paper. So if I put some white chalk or pastel or something on the back of this and then traced over it, it would probably, I could probably make that work. But I think on this lighter grey, I think the Frisk graphite paper is going to work. Transfer paper rather is going to work. So it's, um, it's quite late at night. I'm going to put an audio book or something on or watch a bit of Netflix or something. I'm going to just work through my my picture and film the whole thing and then speed through it and edit it and um, come back and see you at the end probably tomorrow and then I'll upload it so wish me luck and I'll see you at the other end bye oh I'm gonna switch you down to desk cam now a minute get used to technology mm -mm -mm. There we go. So I'm going to speed through this now and I will see you at the other end. Wish me luck. Okay, so first attempt, here we go. Just transferring the sketch to my grey paper with the coat of transparent gesso on. Um, and this did work quite well, actually. The transparent gesso over the heavyweight paper worked pretty well with the pan pastels. Um, going in with my first coat here it's a bit patchy this first layer but you know the idea is to build up the layers and it does get better as it goes along however I very quickly decide I'm not happy with this first attempt <laughs> and abandon it and start again <laughs> just um, adding some details and definition with a, a pastel pencil there and now some some of the darker tones then I start again, try on the darker paper, which works a little bit better, but you can see that the expression on the girl there is reflecting how I'm beginning to feel <laughs> about this. Ah. <laughs> the transparent gesso on that dark did work, work quite well again though for the pan pastels actually. Um, and then I think I'm about to try attempt number three. This one's about to bite the dust. Um, and I just decided to have a go with the, at the one little piece of pastel matte paper. Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Um, it didn't end well the other evening, but today's another day and I've decided it's time to get back on that creative horse and have another go at this pastel portrait. <coughs> um, so having another look, oh. It could be worse. It wasn't the disaster I felt like it was the other night when I finished. It was very late, um, but it, it's not what I wanted. So it's time to have another go. And uh, I just accept that it's all part of the learning process and that's fine. I did have a little bit of a splurge though. I've had a couple of days at work, so I knew it would be a couple of days before I could come back. So there was time for an Amazon order to arrive. I did have a think about what was holding me back. And I think one of the things is that I don't like working in really small spaces like that on this kind of thing. I love working tiny for some things. I love making miniatures, but when I'm doing a picture like this, I like to... So I decided I needed to get some bigger paper and I had a real big think about it and decided to splurge on the pastel mat, which is a considered purchase. So I have bought myself this. Um, yeah, bit of an investment, every sheet. So this is, is this A2? No, this is A3. So half of this would be, half of it would be A4. Yes. And because it's this pastel mat, it has this lovely fine tooth to it, which holds the pastels really well. And I did enjoy working on that pastel mat paper the other night, even though the picture actually went wrong. Um, <clears throat> so. I'm not going to let myself be intimidated by it. Okay, it costs a couple of pounds a sheet, but you know, I could go out and spend that on a cup of coffee, couldn't I? I love that in between each sheet in this pad, there's a, um, oh, let's go to desk cam. Let's go to desk cam, that's easy. Yeah, so in between each sheet, you've got one of these kind of waxed paper sheets, which will 
it's not to protect your work it just makes it feel a bit more special I like that so that's my paper I can get this out of the way now and show you everything else I've got ready now this morning I've only got about an hour before I need to go and catch a bus somewhere but I thought I should be able to make a good start and come back and finish later just need to make myself get back in there it can be a bit dispiriting and things don't go as you want but you know I just need to learn that it's all part of the process I've got some just cheap copy paper that I've just whipped out the printer which I'm going to do to make my use to make my initial sketch and then I'll transfer it I don't have any white transfer paper but I'm going to try one of Jenny's tips was if you don't have the white transfer paper you can try white chalk on the back so I'm going to try this white I've got this white pastel stick I'm going to try with that I've got my stack of hand pastels probably I will mostly be using this which is uh, the portrait set I think that is the portrait set and then I'll probably use a little bit out of here as well I've got my kind of applicator tools um, as well as the pan pastels I've got some pastel pencils and then a sharpener for them they won't fit in my normal electric sharpener and a small knife just in case the sharpener doesn't work out and sometimes one of these sanding blocks helps with the finishing off the sharpening and I've also got some blending stumps and I can also use the sanding block to clean and, and sharpen those and I've got a putty rubber because you can lift the pastels um, you take them off again maybe not completely but at least to some extent and then I've just got a normal kind of propelling pencil to do my initial sketch uh, manky rag couple of large applicator sponges and then these are the small sponge things that go on on these tools as they wear out or get dirty you can wash them and use them again wash them dry them properly really well and then use them again but they do tend to just wear through quite quickly unfortunately okay uh, do excuse the mess on the rest of my desk if I stopped to tidy up I wouldn't have any time left to play so <laughs> so from here on in um, I'm not gonna gabble all the way through if there's anything to say I'll just do a voiceover or something cup of coffee because it is early in the morning I always end up do, doing these things either really early in the morning or really late at night these days busy 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 okay let's get a sketch uh, so I'm just using my mechanical pencil to do my initial rough sketch on just a sheet of you know, cheap thin copy paper nothing fancy a very basic face this will change a lot as it goes along and I find they always start off looking a little bit smiley a little bit happy and wistful they always end up looking a bit miserable and sulky my girl faces <laughs> I don't know why so there we are and now I'm scribbling on the back with the white chalky pastel stick um, and I've turned it over and I'm going back over the sketch to transfer that image onto the pastel matte paper and it's working pretty well now using a white pastel pencil to just you know firm up the details a bit but yeah that's pretty successful so there's my initial drawing and I'm just going in with the first layer of pastels now and um, this paper was such a pleasure to use it really was now I'm trying a little bit of erasing here just to erase out the creases there and I tried a little um, pencil shaped eraser first that didn't work very well now I'm trying my putty rubber that didn't work very well either actually um, continuing with the pastels now um, at this stage I'm mostly using that one shade from the portrait set um, just to get that first layer down really I've, I thoroughly enjoyed this process it's quite it's quite fun to do using the pastels on this paper um, and now I'm adding some white into the eyes you don't want the whites of the eyes to be solid white but if you want lighter areas with pastels you can layer over them but you can't really successfully layer light over dark pastels so I just wanted to get those light areas down I'm going in with different colours of pastel pencils there to get the details of the eyes started 
And now I've, I'm using some magenta on the lips and some of that lovely deep russet colour, which I don't think was part of the portrait set, but I keep it with them. And now um, I'm using that slightly pinker tone to give her a bit of life, adding some pink. You know, the areas around the nose and eyes and mouth tend to be a little pink and cheeks, obviously. And uh, she's starting to look a little bit less corpse-like now. Um, and then dotting between those kind of three basic flesh colours. I quite like some of that slightly yellower toned one as well. Um, a bit of the pinky colour on the neck as well. It's another area that tends to have a little bit of pink. And um, just adding more details. Right, well, I've got to stop again now because I need to go and catch my bus. Um, but I feel like I have jumped back on the horse and got myself going again and at least broken the page <laughs> um, I will say that I think this paper has learnt it's two pounds already because it is such a joy to use it's so such a different experience from using the other paper it was okay using it because this one was with a coat of transparent gesso over um, a plain black heavyweight paper and that worked quite well because it gave it a little bit of tooth but there's something this is yeah I'm really really enjoying this paper and I think it's well worth the money actually yeah I don't really want to stop now I just want to carry on because she's she's kind of it she's not hit well ugly stage is a bit unfair but she's hit that stage where uh, but I know it will come back so I will be excited to come back and carry on doing that later after I've run all my errands and um I will see you then. Thanks for sticking with me. Right. It's the next day. I've come back. I've got another hour, maybe hour and a half to spend on this before I need to go and catch the bus. Let's see what we can do. She's looking a bit a bit patchy, but I think that's normal for this stage of things. Um, I'm just going to keep going forward and see where I end up. <laughs> I'll speed through this and um, catch up with you again in a while. Wish me luck. Okay, so I'm going straight in with the white and uh, picking up some of those highlighted areas again. So the nose, the forehead, above the eyebrows, cheekbones, chin, that bit, you know, upper lip, a little bit on the on the neck as well. Um, and that is starting to bring her to life a little bit, I think. Layering on more of the different colour skin tones. Changing my, ah, oh, right, I'm going with blue now to add a bit more to the eyes. Another layer of colour, darker towards the, darker blue towards the top, lighter at the bottom. Um, and then I'm using that pastel pencil around a kind of terracotta colour to firm up some of the details. Now it starts to get a little bit exciting and scary here because I'm going in with some colours. I'm using that quite bright blue in some of the darker shadowed areas, like the eye sockets and under the chin and around the sides of the face. And then I've got some really bright magenta in the cheeks and some purple and then some of that lighter terracotta colour. I did panic a little bit at this stage, but <laughs> and now going in with the yellow, kind of mid-tones, that yellow ochre colour. And all of these will get layered over, that it won't stay as scary as it looks now. But uh, skin is never just those kind of classic flesh tones, is it? There's always lots of different colours. It does look like someone's punched her a couple of weeks ago at the moment, to be fair, but... <laughs> Oh. and um, I start to really enjoy myself here I just get carried away with the process layering and layering until it started to feel right yeah I think that definitely gives her more of a sort of lifelike glow than if I just use those flats kind of skin tones 
uh, back in with the pastel pencils again to start picking up some of those details that I've got lost along the way which I found kept happening blue in the eyes again and a little bit of pink on the lips and around the eyes and I'm using a cotton bud an eco-friendly cotton bud made of bamboo and uh, and the white pastel pencil there to pick up details around the eyes uh, back to the terracotta there was a lot of backing and forcing much much more even than I'm showing here in fact uh, but that's always the way okay I'm going to have to stop because I'm going to miss my bus otherwise um, I think she's improved since I started uh, just over an hour ago an hour and a half ago um, I'm trying to get a hair on but as soon as I get a hair on I'm going to have it everywhere so I'm going to have to leave that to the last minute anyway so I'm going to have to make myself stop now and I will come back again later to hopefully finish her off see you soon right I've come back I've got another hour before I need to get to bed and I think that's long enough to finish this off um, I'm not going to go to face cam right now because for one thing I can't make the lighting right it's very late at night and for another thing I'm sitting here in my PJs um okay so I'm just going to um really I think I just need to do a bit of work on the hair the background and some kind of a top I think that's it. I don't think I'm going to do any more to the face because I quite like the face as it is. Maybe a little bit of shading around the nostrils. I kind of feel like that's missing a bit. But other than that, I'm kind of done with this. Right, so first thing I'm doing is sorting out that nose area, adding some darker shades uh, to give it a bit of uh, dimension, really. A bit of shadow underneath. It does give me a bit of trouble, this nose. I keep coming back to it. Um, but you can do that you, you, that's one of the nice things about these pastels one of the many nice things and just um, beginning on the hair now which I've been dying to do I love always wanted red hair like this myself and I love doing pictures of girls with red hair I always wanted blue eyes as well <laughs> oh, yeah I love this color it's one of the reasons I keep it with the, with the portrait set really um, using some of the other colours as well to, to give it some highlights. Obviously no hair is, is the same colour all through. The lighting's doing something weird here, I'm not sure why. And uh, despite what I said, I couldn't resist um, doing some more work on the face once I got started. So I'm just continuing those layers. And now starting on the background, I thought this lovely shade of blue, I love this blue, would set it off well. What is going on with that lighting? It was very late at night. <laughs> um, just coming to the end of that sort of first layer of the background. And uh, giving it a nice magenta top. <clears throat> Back into the face again. It's quite hard to know when to stop sometimes, I find. So back to that nose again. Oh, stop there. Stop there. Oh, leave it alone. <laughs> Just correcting a little funny angle I had going on there. That face is still uh, wonky, but then, you know, my face is wonky, actually. We're not, none, nobody's symmetrical. And yeah, now I'm... Oh. I still, I still can't stop. I just keep going and going. See how many times you can layer, though, especially on this paper. Leave that nose alone now. Oh, I'm kind of feeling like I've lost a little bit of definition. So Jenny, um, Jenny Mano left the the black of the um, paper underneath showing through to create a kind of shadowed effect. I haven't done that. Um, but then 
the idea is to make it your own so I think that's what I've tried to do I may come back to her later on but for the time being she's done thanks very much for watching um, I have all sorts of ideas in the pipeline um, and I'll see you again in a couple of days thank you very much bye